Hey, what's going on, folks? Hope y'all doing well. Welcome to another financial Q&A session. Uh, so shout out to all my folks in the building. <clears throat> Do me a favor, uh, type your name down there. Type where are you are from. And if you have a business, you can put the name of your business. Also, let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Um, I don't know if I can start my video. The thing I hate about Zoom is when you have your computer on for a long time, and you try to use Zoom, it doesn't let you start your video. So I don't know if it's going to let me. Uh, let me see. I'll, I'll try it out in a second. But um, one moment. Okay, so I see folks is coming in. Uh, let me see. Okay, my man Derek's in the building. Green is Ryan McCray, but people aren't broke, they just have a broken mindset. Yes, so he's referring to the new dope tea we got in the I Black Apparel store. Um, as a request from Derek C. Williams. <clears throat> Uh, because we truly believe that black people are broke. They talk about black people are broke. We ain't got no resources. We ain't got no money. But if you look in the black community, I see a lot of money. I see a lot of resources. I just see people who are focused on the wrong shit, have a broken mindset, uh, have adopted poverty as the culture, and just weren't trained or don't learn or don't want to learn other ways to live a financially healthy life. Uh, and so forth. So do me a favor, y'all. Y'all can put y'all questions down uh, or you can put them in the Q&A or the chat. We're going to go to some of the questions that were submitted prior to tonight. Uh, I think it's about two or three in the queue. Uh, but I give y'all a few minutes to come in here. Again, put your name and where you're from. And if you have a business, you can put the name of your business in um, before we get started. Okay, so let me uh, check the chat. All right, so let's have we just got Derek in the chat for now. I'll see some other folks coming in, uh, folks coming in, people calling in. Uh, so I'm excited to speak with y'all today. So within the past week or two, we've acquired a lot of new students, a lot of people enrolled, a lot of people signed up, a lot of people took advantage of the all access discount. Um, a lot of people, you know, are interested in financial literacy and learning how to invest in the stock market, how to start business, how to market your business, how to make money online and sell products online. So I'm so excited to speak with y'all today. <clears throat> Again, uh, this is another financial Q&A session uh, where you have the ability to ask me directly any questions, any comments, any information you would like to know to make more money in 2019. I'm all about people who want to level up. If you do not want to level up, this is not the place for you. I'm going to repeat that. If you do not want to level up, this is not the place for you. <clears throat> this is not the place for you. I'm tired of us coming in last place. I'm tired of mediocrity. I'm tired of going out in the community. You know, a lot of people talk a lot of stuff on the internet. But once you go out into the community, I'm tired of always seeing our people in last place. I'm tired of our people, you know, focusing on the wrong things, worshiping athletes and entertainers, not knowing that someone may be pulling up in the bands, but they may be in debt $100,000. So I made it my choice and my goal to change the economic infrastructure of the African American community and beyond and beyond because this is so important. So we need to get more people onto this wave. So instead of watching the NBA playoffs right now, instead of watching whatever you wanna watch, it's just as important, if not more important, for you to understand this information because this is life-changing information. If you do not wanna invest in yourself, if you don't wanna pay for information, 
If you don't want to invest in information, if you don't want to surround yourself with like-minded people, the right people, you're always going to struggle. You're always going to struggle. That was something that I realized a few years ago. Growing up, we always hear, you know, you always see that cliche term or you see people, um, you know, that made it, you know, athletes or entertainers or whatever the case may be. And then they always say, you know, well, if I can do it, you can do it. I started in poverty, you know, and then I, you know, if anybody can do it, I can do it. I got signed to a multi-million dollar contract. I got drafted number one in the NFL and the NBA. But that's only about 0.01% of people that make it that way. 0.01% of people that make it that way. People who are self-made uh, wealth creators, people that are self-made millionaires and billionaires, there's a formula to becoming successful. Let me check the chat. <clears throat> Derek says, I made my daughter watch how to sell to the Negro and she'll be doing a refresher of the future financial gurus course. Yes, that's great. That how to sell how to sell to a Negro video is so crucial. It's so crucial. I was watching a documentary last. We did a documentary called Boss. Uh, it stands for like Something, I forget exactly what, it's, what the acronym stands for, but it basically was about uh, the black experience for black entrepreneurs, you know, ever since slavery, how, you know, after slavery, you know, like the Freedmen's Bank or, you know, just like today, a lot of black folks that would not be able to survive economically, economically without becoming entrepreneurs, how, you know, they became entrepreneurs after slavery and built businesses and some people became millionaires like Madam C.J. Walker and Annie Malone and people like that. It's just a great documentary, and it talks about, uh, you know, how to sell to the Negro and all that, about the person who started Black Enterprise. It's just a great documentary if you haven't saw it already. Uh, it's called Boss. It was on PBS. You can go online. I think about your replay. Go to PBS. Uh, but it was a really good documentary. But this stuff is very important. So, like I said, when I realized, you know, a few years ago, there's actually a formula. There's actually a secret to success that we don't learn growing up. There are certain things and certain patterns you need to do in order to get ahead financially and economically. It's not, you know, a magic trick. It's not about getting lucky. It's about positioning yourself in a place where you can be financially successful. What does that mean? Well, the first thing is reading books. So this is a conversation I had with someone a few weeks ago, you know, and growing up, you know, I wasn't a huge reader, you know, I am now. I mean, I, I you know, when I was little, I, I liked to read, you know, I might not have been able to comprehend everything I was reading at the time, but I did like to read. And then like in high school, you know, I had my ups and downs, you know, some down to high school, I was getting straight A's, you know, some days in high school, I was getting suspended for 10 days doing dumb stuff. So I had my ups and downs like throughout my high school years. Um, but I do remember when I read the autobiography from Malcolm X, that changed my life. Reading that book changed my life. So what I'm getting at is, you know, a lot of us, you know, aren't avid readers or didn't grow up necessarily, you know, as avid readers. But I was, like I said, I was having a conversation with someone a few weeks ago and he was talking about how much, you know, money, more money he wants to make, how he's struggling financially, how he's looking for a second job, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, how many books do you read about money? And he's like, well, I, 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 don't, I don't really like to read, bro. You know, you know, I ain't reading years. And I, reading's not really my thing. Like, I hate reading. Like, I got your book, but I didn't even read it yet. And I'm like, I mean, that's cool. But, like, you know you're stacking the odds up against you. If you don't want to read, trying to become a millionaire or trying to be ahead financially, not impossible, but you're just stacking the odds up against yourself. You're stacking the odds up against yourself. So instead of looking for a second job, Instead of putting that four, eight, 16, whatever, 12 hours you put in a second job, why don't you take that time to read about money, to learn about money? There are thousands, millions of books about money, about entrepreneurs, Black and outside the Black community. Something like The Wealth Choice, where Dr. Dennis Crimbo sat down with the top Black entrepreneurs and interviewed them and asked them how you became a self-made entrepreneur self-made millionaire, self-made black millionaire. There are tons and tons of books of all that. There are so many trainings online. 
things online, things you can do. So all I'm saying is there's a secret to getting ahead financially. It's not about luck. It's not about, you know, getting passed down millions of dollars. There's a secret to it. Another secret is, uh, to it is your network. Who do you hang around? Who do you know that has resources, that can make plays, that is a shot caller? How many millionaires do you have in your phone? Let me know. I have some in my phone. Let me know in the comments. How many millionaires do you have that you can get in contact with? I have multiple people that I know personally that have seven-figure businesses. Having a conversation with someone who makes $100,000 or more a month will change your life. You're not going to go about your life the same way. When someone's talking about getting a second job for $12 an hour, and you just had a conversation with someone who makes $100,000 in a month, those conversations are not the same. When you sit with winners, the conversations are different. And I get it. Most of us didn't grow up around those circles. Most of us <coughs> did not grow up around those situations. Most of us didn't come from money. We weren't trained on how to build seven, eight-figure businesses. But at the same time, right now, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. How much time are you putting into getting around other people who are like-minded, who are doing great things? There are hundreds of conferences going around all across the country on that'll tell you how to go from zero to six, seven, eight figures from scratch. But are you researching those? Instead of putting money up, you know, to go out to eat or on vacation, put that same thousand dollars into a conference where you know there's going to be millionaires in the building. There's a conference that I'm going to shortly where the ticket is a thousand dollars, literally a thousand dollars just to get in. We're not talking about flights, we're not talking about hotels, we're not talking about spending money. We're not talking about money to have in your pocket while you're there so you're not sitting in a conference broke. A thousand dollars just for the ticket, but I'll gladly pay a thousand dollars for a ticket if I know there's millionaires in the room. That's just another secret to success. Another secret to success <clears throat> is what you do with your time. Just you being here right now at this moment is setting you light years ahead of most other people. The average person out here, when you're telling them you're on a webinar or learning about financial literacy or money, whatever the case may be, they're going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like the Spurs and Nuggets about to play, bro. We about to go and watch the game or we about to go do whatever. We about to go and chill or whatever the case may be. So, you know, there's a reason why only 1% of people become successful. There's a reason. There's a reason. It's not, like I said, it's not luck. How many of y'all are going to not watch another basketball game or another power or another movie because you know you got to put that time in on a training? You got to put the time in to read. You got to put the time in a conference. You got to put the time just in your business. Just on running your business, you got to put that time in. But how many people are willing to do it? All right, so we'll get to the questions in a minute. Let me go to the chat. Uh, let me see. Let me pull it up. Uh, what I will never understand is how blacks with all this money and more information seem to be stuck when former slaves with no money and functionally illiterate go on to form HBCUs that dog don't hunt. Yeah, because the, the, the problem is, and I was reading something earlier, the problem is nowadays people don't know that they're slaves. That's the problem. I was reading something about Harriet Tubman saying, um, you know, they were saying like, how she freed, you know, X amount of slaves and so many slaves and Underground Railroad and stuff like that. And she's like, well, that's great. But I could have freed, you know, 100,000 more only if they knew they were slaves. Half of them didn't even know they were slaves. They thought they were just put on this earth to be slaves to white folks. So nowadays, I would say that a lot of people don't even know they're slaves. They don't even know. They don't understand that they're slaves to Apple iPhones. They don't understand that they're slaves to uh, Michael Jordans. They don't understand that they're slaves to excessive entertainment consumerism. 
And listen, I was the same way. You know, I was the same way. <clears throat> I was an excessive consumer. I love getting the new sneakers when they came out. <clears throat> I love, you know, being able to go to the club and, you know, uh, live it up and spend money. But at a point, you know, I realized, like, okay, you know, I've been doing this, you know, my whole 20s was partying and going out and spending money, stuff like that. And I realized, like, okay, like, I did that for years, but, like, what value did that bring me? Like, I'd rather not go out and not party and not spend money on dumb shit, but be able to be my own boss and make my own money than go out and live it up, but you got to go work for someone. That leaves you vulnerable. So if, you know, whatever happens, you know, government shut down or company downsizes or you just get mad at your boss or you want to take off a day and you don't want to, now you're a slave to that person that you work for. Now you can't ball out like you used to. I'm going to check the chat. Uh, funny you should mention that. I just got off a live from a guy in California, and I told him that I was stepping aside because Ryan McCarthy was on the Q&A. He said, who's that? I told him to check out your channel. Yeah, so, I mean, the stuff that we're, you know, talking about, like, the average folks aren't talking about this. The average folks aren't talking about this. So I want you to ask yourself, are you average? Let me know. Are you average? I mean, nothing wrong with being average. But usually people that I come across that rock with me, they're like, I don't want to be average. I want to change the world. I want to make a difference in my community, in my life, just in your life for your family. Like literally, you know, changing your mindset. That's why I wrote my book. Changing your mindset could, you know, make you hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Literally a, a simple mindset shift. A simple mindset shift from saying, okay, you know, instead of, you know, putting that extra 100, 200 on dumb shit a month, I'm going to put that into the stock market. I'm going to invest consistently and get compound interest. That can literally, you know, make you a half a million dollars over 20 years. Just a simple shift like that and say, listen, I ain't going to get my premium cable package. I'm going to just have internet and watch Netflix. And I'm going to put the extra $200 I'm going to save into an investment account, in 20 years, that could be a half a million dollars. But then some people will say, you know, nah, bro, I, I, I got to watch Power. I can't not watch Power. So which one are you? Let me know. Uh, all right, so let me see. So let me go into the questions that were submitted prior. Um, let me see. Let me pull them up. Okay, yeah. Now, now, one more thing I wanted to say, uh, I guess, before we get to that. Uh, the last this little secret or nugget I'll drop on y'all, like I said, uh, another thing that you want to be cautious of is just your time. Like, like, I want you to go out and just and study people who are financially successful. Study people who are millionaires. Study people who have the life that you dream of, and you're going to see how they don't waste no time. They don't waste no time. They're not on the same time as most other people. They not chilling and hanging around and letting good time go to waste. So if you want to be ahead, you know, I, I was having a conversation with someone else a few weeks ago, same type of conversation. We, you know, and like I said, all, all this that I'm saying, I'm talking to myself as well. Um, but most of us never equate what we do with our time to actually making more money. It's always about a second job or trying to do this or trying to do that, but it's never about just turning off the damn TV for an extra two hours and picking up a book or a trading or your business or a conference or whatever, or th this live, um, instead of watching the damn TV. Like, just that simple shift of not watching as much TV will put a lot more money into your video. But a lot of people ain't talking about that. A lot of people ain't talking about that. Like, just you not hanging out as much will put a lot more money into your video. Like, just, you know, 
go like going to a training like this or you know a live event in your area or whatever doing that consistently that will put you light years ahead of other people because like i said most people during this time ain't doing nothing that's going to bring them value ain't doing nothing that's going to bring them value so uh let me go to the questions uh and also any you know anybody else in here put y'all questions in the chat or the q a and we'll get to those after these three but uh, let me see. Let me pull them up. All right, Derek says, "Our right, greetings. E Trade will be trading cryptocurrency. A move, to, a move to rival Robinhood. I love cryptocurrency, and this move signals the beginning of mass adoption of the uh, virgin asset class." I've been reading it. The stock market itself will one day be tokenized or digitalized. So called smart contracts will be the wave of the future. What are your thoughts on this? Um, honestly, um, I mean, I like crypto too. Like, I, I bought Bitcoin. I haven't even looked at it since I bought it, you know, almost two years ago now since Bitcoin got like hot. But um, as far as I me, mean, I think, and in general, I think everything's going to be digitalized anyway, you know, stock market included. But honestly, I don't know too many about too much about these smart contracts. I um, mean, so you said it, you know, like me personally, I, you know, I buy my stocks. I invest for the long term. I don't really check day to day stuff. I mean, I watch, you know, CNBC, you know, I, I do watch it and stuff and just see what's going on in different companies, hot IPO, stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> I don't really follow it too, too much. So I'm not too familiar with these smart contracts or whatever they're called. But as far as, you know, if they'll be the wave of the future, you know, nobody knows. That's what I always say as well. Like, I don't care who you watch, Jim Cramer or whatever you watch, Damon John or who, whoever you watch on TV or online or, you know, with reading, nobody knows what's going to happen. So in my opinion, you know, anything can happen. Two years ago, everybody said Bitcoin was the next biggest thing. And, you know, everybody's going to become a millionaire from Bitcoin. You know, we see how that cooled off. You know, of course, that could happen again. You know, my uh, perspective was always long-term investing. So, um, you know, we still don't know exactly what will happen with Bitcoin. But, um, you know, my whole take and everything is nobody knows, you know, who's the, you know, uh, uh, what's going to be the wave of the future. Any Anything I could say would just be a guess. Um, and really, you know, my, my personal opinion is anything's possible. All right, let me get to the second question. Let me scroll down. All right, second question is, just being in the market is just about a can't-miss way to build wealth, but there is one sector that you love, but is there one sector you love over the rest? The cannabis industry is just waiting on positive legislation to blow. I agree. Two little-known stocks that I'm having in are Hexo, uh, Hexo, uh, which the ticker symbol is H-E-X-O, and Origin House, ticker symbol is O R um, O R. H O F, but my two big ones are robotics and healthcare. Robo Global is the ticker symbol is R O B O, and CRISPR Chris Therapeutics ticker symbol is C R S P. Are my pet project stocks? Any thoughts? Uh, me personally, one sector that I like over the other is just tech. I'm big on tech. I mean, I just see tech. You know, tech is definitely the present and the future. Um, like you see, you know, with Facebook uh, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, definitely tech, you know, also, you know, companies like the Airbnbs or the Ubers and even Leave and Lyft hasn't doing well. But just those type of companies and like their business model, uh, those are the type of companies that I like, that I like to invest in. I was reading something the other day. It said Hilton Hotels has been around for like, I think almost 100 years. And their valuation is like twenty billion dollars or something like that. They've been around for twenty years, a hundred years, twenty billion dollars. But Airbnb, who's been around for like nine years, their valuation is like twenty-eight billion or thirty billion or something like that in nine years. So nine years, their company's worth almost thirty billion. In a hundred years, Hilton is worth twenty billion. So stuff like that is like, damn, that's the type of stuff that I want to get in. That's the future. But uh, as far as stacks that I like, a sector that I like, like I'm big on tech. 
you know, you see how Facebook is built a massive company. You see what Amazon's trading at. You see what Google is trading at. Um, <clears throat> you know, even, uh, you know, things like Spotify and stuff like that. Like anything having to do with, you know, tech, Shopify. I've been talking about Shopify for years now. Shopify has been doing well. Um, so, like, I'm big on tech. Another one as far as the marijuana industry uh, that someone told me about is, uh, I think it's called Hemp. Uh, H-E-M-P, I think, is the uh, ticker symbol, H-E-M-P. I think it's still a penny stock. Um, Y'all can take a look at it. But, um, yeah, yeah, hemp is another one just that you might want to take a look at and see how it does for you. You can get in that, that cheap. Uh, so let me go to the other question. One moment. All uh, right, so just your initial thought to this question. I'm a science fiction boy. I love the original Twilight Zone with Rod Sterling. That's before my time. <laughs> the original Star Trek, Planet of the Apes, and all that. I often think about how artificial intelligence is slowly gaining a foothold in everyday life. There is a religion called Wave of the Future, heading up by a rich dude named Anthony Lebowski. He worked on Google Street View and the like. His religion is based on AI being worshipped as God. Yikes, hey, that is crazy. Elon Musk does self driving cars with Tesla, I'm told, yet he's made investors wary based on some of his comments. One comment I found odd, when he asked about AI, he said he would be summoning the demon if AI is left unchecked, yet he's building self-driving cars. Uh, confirmed cases are all over the place of Tesla vehicles exploding. When I let driving take control of the vehicles, et cetera, what are your thoughts on the quote and how AI is moving man out the way? Yeah, I mean, AI and tech are definitely going to move people out the way. You know, self-driving cars, they say within the next 10 years, self-driving cars will officially be out. They'll get all the kinks out. We'll see if that happens. Uh, they're going to have, like, you know, um, people that, like, drive trucks now from state to state. They're going to have self-driving uh, trucks and stuff like that, you know, which will get rid of all truck drivers. That's what they're uh, implying. But um, <clears throat> in my opinion, uh, tech, you know, is definitely going to replace a lot of jobs, but at the same time, it has the ability to create a lot of jobs. Uh, you know, with Amazon, uh, you know, they're, of course, heavy in tech and everything like that. And, you know, change the world as far as, you know, uh, ordering online and e-commerce and, you know, delivery and two-day shipping and Amazon Prime and, you know, even uh, streaming content, stuff like that. Uh, and I know, you know, they have, like, a lot of people working from it are necessarily Amazon employees. Most of, a lot of people that deliver your stuff, like couriers, they're not employees. Um, uh, but they still employ a lot of people. Uh, let me put the exact number and how many people they employ. Uh, let me see. I know I've seen the number not this recently. Um, let me see. <clears throat> so it says Amazon has 647,000 employees. So a lot of people would say like, you know, and I've seen Jeff Bezos talking recently, you know, saying that like, yeah, you know, tech will uh, get rid of a lot of jobs, but at the same time, it can create a lot of jobs which I do agree with, because Amazon, you know, is definitely, like I say, changing the world, but they employ over half a million people. Over half a million people. You know, 100 years ago, most of, you know, people's uh, jobs and stuff like that, you know, I think they said, I forget the exact number, and they said in the document I was just watching, like, I don't know if it was 70% of people were like farmers, I forget the exact number. Vast majority of people 100 years ago, you know, worked on a farm and stuff like that. If you would have told somebody 100 years ago, you could have a business selling information on the internet, they would laugh at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? You know, 100 years ago, like, there's going to be an actual job where you can sell things on the internet and make money. And, you know, you don't have to, you know, be a farmer or a laborer or a sharecropper or something like that. They probably would have laughed at you. So 100 years from now, who knows what type of jobs can be created? Uh, based on new technology. As far as AI is concerned, honestly, I, I, you know, I hear a lot about AI. I don't follow it too, too heavy, you know, on like 
everything that's coming out and all the things that people are predicting and stuff like that, like, honestly, I just don't. Like, my day-to-day, like, to be completely honest with y'all, is just running a company. You know, trying to make more than we spend, trying to acquire customers, trying to work with clients, trying to coach people, uh, you know, trying to get my books in as many hands as possible, really trying to provide financial results to people, really trying to change your belief patterns, really trying to do everything I can do to help you build wealth for yourself and your family so we can change the dynamic of our community. That's my day-to-day life. You know, like I said, I don't follow the news headlines or like that. I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily up on, you know, all the latest things going on uh, necessarily, you know, unless, you know, I know it's going to definitely like affect my business and the bottom line and, you know, how I run the company, stuff like that. You know, that's stuff I might follow more closely. But like the AI stuff, you know, I hear a lot about it. Um, you know, yeah, I'm interested in it as well. You know, I just, you know, like I said, I, I'm not, I just don't follow it too heavy. So also, Derek, if you got any resources or anything for people, just drop it in the chat. Erica is interested in it. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's just my thoughts on it. Thank you for the questions, Brother D. Um, if anybody has any other questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, let me see. I don't think there's any more submit. Let me just check. All right, so I don't think it was any other questions submitted. Um, so like I said, uh, again, guys, if y'all have any other questions or comments or anything you want to talk about, you know, feel free to put it down there. I'm telling y'all, opportunities like this do not always come up. So this is your opportunity now to ask me directly, live, uh, any question that can help you financially or, or you know, if you have a business to make more money in 2019. Okay, so let me just pull this up. Uh, okay, so again, like I said, guys, <clears throat> this is your chance to ask me any questions, financial, business questions. I don't know when the next, you know, we do have these regularly, but I don't know exactly when we're going to have the next one. My schedule is getting kind of tight. I'll be traveling soon. So like I said, this is your opportunity to ask me any question, you know, financial, business question. You will be making more money in 2019 and beyond. Because literally, like, one conversation with one individual can literally change so many things for you. Asking the right question or, you know, saying, you know, I'm thinking about launching this and what do you think and a simple tweak, uh, that can literally make you hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, I've had so many conversations with so many people that have literally changed my life and my business and my bottom line and my family. Like, literally. Literally, like just conversations of being in the room with someone or talking to someone, hopping on a call with someone, being in a Q&A session with someone like me, person, I'm the person that's going to get those nuggets. Anytime I'm in any room with any individual or whatever, I'm going to get those nuggets. Um, is it a good idea to be LLC, S, or C Corp? Um, it depends on your business. I mean, usually, um, unless you have like a huge company. <laughs> Um, you want to just start with LLC, but it definitely depends. Um, you know, if I were you, I would maybe talk to an accountant or a, or a lawyer um, just to find the best way, you know, like maybe from a tax perspective, what would be the best for the type of business you're going to start. But generally speaking, you know, LLC is, you know, the way to go. Um, S Corp and C Corp, you know, are just like a little bit higher level on, you know, on stuff depending on what type of business you're going to start, but you can always talk to an accountant. And then what type of business are you thinking about starting? Let me know if you can, you know, what type of business you're thinking about starting, uh, an AI type of business. Um, yeah, that, like I said, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't know too much about AI. I know it's probably going to be pretty expensive. Um, so, I would say um, definitely just do your research. Um, you know, just think about like what problem you are solving. You know, business, a lot of people want to talk to the business folks all the time. People come to me for coaching and stuff like that. 
And a lot of us just don't think about or don't think about enough is like exactly what problem we're solving. We want to have great products and services and do great things, but we also got to think about like, all right, what problem are you solving? Yeah, it's great that you want to have that product or service and you want to do that, but like what actual problem are you solving for someone? What actual direct result do you want to give them? So uh, I think AI, you know, is great. Just do your research, make sure you definitely know what you're doing. Like I said, I don't think that's going to be cheap to start, but in generally speaking, uh, LLC is, you know, a good way to go, a good way to start. Um, thank you for that question. <clears throat> so if anybody has any other questions, you know, please type them in. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, again, you know, we don't got to be on her super long guys, you know, I don't want to just be, you know, talking into the air. Um, but, you know, if y'all have any questions, I'm telling you, ask them now. I don't know when we're going to have this time again. Uh, you are literally, you know, getting secrets that I've learned from people who have multi-million dollar business, people who are multi-millionaires that have, that what they have shared with me over the years on how they build their business, how they live their life, how they manage their time, what they read, what they do, who they hang around with, who they build relationships with, all this type of stuff. Appreciate any time you do these Q&A sessions. Yes, absolutely. I love doing them. I uh, definitely love doing them. Thank y'all for showing up. I can't do them without y'all. Um, what's a good book to read? It depends on, you know, what your, what your goal is. You know, you want to, <clears throat> you know, you want to start an online business. I can tell you that. You just want to learn about wealth. You know, I can tell you about that. Uh, just let me know, you know, I guess what, like what ultimately your goal would, you know, your goals are uh, just in general. Yeah, definitely mind over money. <laughs> if you ain't read mind over money yet, make sure you read mind over money. <clears throat> I'm going to type it down in the chat. Um, yeah, so if you haven't read Mind Over Money, um, so yeah, you read that, okay, online and wealth, um, well, wealth, uh, The Wealth Choice is a good book, definitely The Wealth Choice, if you haven't read it already, um, as far as, um, Africa, it's gift to America, you know, Malcolm X biography. Yeah, all of them, all those are great books. But um, <clears throat> if you want to make money online, a great book that I would read, I have read, is uh, like something like dot, like a dot com secrets or expert secrets. Um, those are pretty good books. Um, I think I have the link if you want to get a free copy. Let me uh, let me pull it up. Let me just stop sharing for a minute. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, like those are great books. Uh, the Wealth Choice. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, you read Mind Over Money, you can read Money Master the Game, you can read Black Labor, White Wealth, you can read. Um, there are literally like I got stacks and stacks of books, uh, like sitting next to me right now because I'm big on reading. Um, that will literally set you ahead of uh, so many other people because a lot of people just don't want to read. Uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, I'm looking at last level two. Yeah, Rich Dad Poor Dad's classic. Of course, if you haven't read that, definitely want to read uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah, if you if you haven't read that, you definitely want to read that. Uh, let me see what else. Oh y'all. Uh, uh, all right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to wait to the chizat. Uh, 
uh, yeah, if you want to read Dot Com Secrets, you can get a copy there. Uh, yeah, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, the Wealth Choice. Uh, it's a black book called Black Fortunes, talking about uh, the black people who became black millionaires after slavery. Um, there's so many, so many, so many books. Like, literally, so many books. Um, <clears throat> I try to read a different book once a week. I haven't been hitting my mark. I've been doing it like once every two weeks, but um, like, you know, just doing that, turning the damn TV off will set you light years ahead of other people. Light years. <laughs> yeah, you definitely see it on Dotcom Secret. So if you just click that link right there, you can get a free copy. All you gotta pay the shipping. <laughs> click that link right there. You can get Dotcom Secrets, Dotcom Secrets. Literally, these are, you know, eight and nine figure of uh, business secrets. Like coming from someone who, you know, who has a hundred million dollar company that's giving you secrets that they've learned to build up a hundred million dollar company that they give into you, you know, free. All you got to do is cover the shipping. Um, had a book for a year and, oh man, you had that book for a year. You definitely got to read it. Make sure you read that. You can also read Expert Secrets. You ain't read Expert Secrets yet. Make sure you can read Expert Secrets too. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, all of Dr. Boyce Watkins' books are great. I think he has a new one coming out. Um, I'm trying to think what else. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's like so many books. Um, I heard that that was bad. Kiyosaki said he became wealthy that way. That goes against what I thought I knew about money. Um, that was bad. I mean, debt is bad, but I mean, there's good debt and bad debt. You know, if you're using debt to leverage your assets, you know, taking an, a loan or some type of debt to put into an asset, you know, you put in taking a loan out to buy a house, but it's going to be a rental property. So, you know, it'll make you more money and it'll appreciate so you can pay the loan back. Okay. If you're taking on debt, you know, because you know your business is booming, but you need this loan to fill inventory because you know your business is going to make money, you're going to be profitable. You know, nothing wrong with that. You're taking on debt to go on vacation, you're tripping. You're taking debt, you know, for student loans, and you're coming out making 40000 a year, but you just spent $200,000. That's not a smart investment. So, you know, it really depends on, in my opinion, you know, what you're using it for, uh, you know, taking on debt. Uh, to put more money into your pocket so you can pay off the debt, so you can leverage your assets, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, okay, so yeah, I also been following Kiyosaki, you know, of course, Heavy as well. Rich Dad Porter has a classic, Cash Flow Quadrant. Uh, me and Derek were talking about that, uh, I guess, a few weeks ago. The Cash Flow Quadrant, you know, the uh, employee, self-employed, business owner, and investor. I used to think, I'm like, yeah, I'm in the I quadrant, but no, I quadrant is not the regular investors. The I quadrant is definitely not regular investor, someone who goes in and buys a stock in E-Trade. That's not what Kiyosaki is talking about. He's talking about professional investors, what he, what he, he calls, quote unquote, professional investors, people who are like accredited investors, people who are like Venture capitalists, you know, people like that. He's not talking about um, the regular investors like you and I. Um, any, do anyone play cat? Well, I, I actually, I, like I've seen, I've actually not, got, not had a chance to actually play the game yet, but I want to play it. Uh, you know, it looks fun. Um, but uh, like the cash flow quadrant is, you know, great. Like me, you know, technically I'm still in the S quadrant. I'm still not, you know, the business owner quadrant because, you know, when he says business owner in the top right of the quadrant, he's not talking about someone who just fills an LLC. He's talking about somebody that has a sustainable, legitimate business with employees, with revenue, with payroll, whereas though you can walk with your business for 12 months and your business still runs. I was having a conversation with someone uh, not too long ago and saying like, yeah, you know, I follow Robert Kiyosaki and the cash flow quadrant and like me, you know, I started my business. I'm now in the B. I'm like, no, you're not in the B. 
you're not in the B. The you know business owner that he's talking about in that quadrant, like I said, is someone where you can walk away from your business for 12 months and go on vacation and travel the world for 12 months, and you come back and your business is still running. <laughs> You have a system in place where your business is still running. You have employees, you have payroll, you have revenue, you have all that type of stuff. You have executives. Like I said, your business is systemized, a turnkey operation, whereas though, you know, you're not managing it just from a laptop in your house or in some co-working space. I remember you saying that you were getting into real estate. Jay Morrison will be giving his corner class here in July. Being an honorary founder, he reached out. I intend to be there. If nothing else is so good, what he knows. Yeah, shout out to Jay Morrison. Um, yeah, I have been, you know, getting into real estate a little bit, looking at, you know, wholesaling and flipping and all that type of stuff. Um, yeah, I did see the information about the corner class. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go. I went the last two years. Um, when you said it is July 19th, let me, I got to look at my schedule and see if I can make it. But, um, yeah, I mean, shout out to Jay Morrison. I mean, he's doing great things with the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. I didn't invest in the Tulsa Fund yet. I'm not opposed to it. But, um, yeah, the corner class is great. You know, like I said, I went the last two years. The first year in Philly, it was on Broad Street in South Philly. Last year, it was at Malcolm X Park. Um, it's definitely great, you know. But, you know, me personally, I need, like, a little bit more. At my, at my point... In my learning and training, like I need a little bit more, me personally. Like I'm at the point now where it's like I need a ten, twenty thousand dollar mastermind. Like that, like that, like for me, the type of level like I'm trying to get to, uh, and right now with just information that I know and stuff like that, like now nah, you know I'm not a heavy in real estate, so of course I can learn so much in real estate. But just in general, like me personally, I'm at the point now where it's like I need to be a room where I got to pay fifteen thousand dollars just to get in a room. Because I need to learn how you build a million dollar or a multi-million dollar or eight-figure business. Like, that's where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So, corner class, you know, I try to make it. Like I said, the last one was back in September last year, and it was definitely good. You know, I know one of his uh, close home person who works for him and works with him, Will Roundtree, who does his uh, credit stuff. Uh, they, do a, they do a credit class as well. Let me um, uh, pull up his company. Uh, okay, I think it's called Easy Funding. They do like easy, easy funding. They do like a, a credit class. Excuse me, they do a credit class the day after the uh, corner class. <clears throat> but uh, so I know his man, Will, Will Roundtree. That's my man. I seen him last year when I went. But um, yeah, I mean, it's great. You know, I think everybody should go if you're interested. Um, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to make it this year. Um, but yeah, he's definitely doing great things. It was funny because he had DJ Vlad stuff when they were debating these Titans real estate, but I did the edit to my portfolio. Yeah, I, I seen that interview too, and it was good. Like I said, Jay Morris is doing great things, man. Like, shout out to him. Uh, shout out to everything he's doing. Um, you know, I just don't know if I'll be able to make the corner class. Like I said, I went the last couple years. Um, but me personally, I just need a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, I need a little bit more. Uh, you know what I mean? <clears throat> For me to come out. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to Jim Morrison. Like I said, he's doing great things, doing amazing things. Um, I just don't know if I'll be able to attend. Uh, cause you know, like I said, I just need to make a little bit more. Um, so if anybody got any other questions, please have them in. Um, they only want to do like an hour. So we got about 10 minutes left. If you have any other questions, you can put them in now. And also, Derek, let me know, like, how, how has the Tulsa Fund been doing? You know, I'm definitely interested in that. Uh, like I said, I, didn't, I know it's only, what, like, 500 minimum, and I, I don't, you know, I just didn't, I'm not opposed to the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Um, I just, yeah, I just didn't become an investor yet. You know, I still probably will. Um, but let me know, like, how has your, how has the fund actually been doing? That's something that I'm definitely, you know, interested in. Um, because I know in the beginning he was saying, you know, about, I forget what exactly what return he was talking about the fund making, but I'm definitely interested in learning, like, how it has been doing 
because I know it's been what is it almost a year now? Yeah, when when I don't know when he launched it was it like September or August somewhere like last year. Um, definitely interested on you know how it's been doing, but um, yeah, like I said, the Tulsa Fun was definitely you know a game changer. <clears throat> I don't think anybody else raised that much money for a fun 100% black owned ever. Um, so shout out to that. I think Julian Gordon, my man, my homie, he put like 40,000 in, which was great. But, um, uh, just let me know, um, <clears throat> 8% ROI shared amongst every investor. They have a ton of prospects in the pipeline. Uh, all right. So you got an 8% return. What was it a year? Something like that. Yeah, let me know, Derek. So you say you got eight percent return. Uh, saw the video presentation last week. Very transparent. And he ran down the numbers. Uh, yeah, that's what's up. I mean, listen, I, I ain't mad at eight percent. Um, you know, I ain't mad at 8%, you know, I know in business you can do probably like a thousand percent, um, <laughs> like literally people doing like a thousand percent return on a business from like the last year, whatever the case may be. But um, yeah, like I said, man, shout out to Jay Morrison. I seen, you know, he was in Philly last year. Uh, it was, you know, a cool event. But um, <clears throat> um Probably I'll show an email just came through. Um, but yeah, he's I mean, listen, he's definitely transparent, especially with stuff like that. Like you gotta be transparent uh, with any type of investment funds or anything that you are building, especially with black folks, because that is what kills us the most is not being transparent and people think you're trying to take their money, whatever the case may be. Um, so I'm I, you know, I'm definitely happy that he is doing that. We also have an investment club with I Buy Black. We just started. If anybody's interested, uh, I can give you the information. Um, we are uh, doing that real estate. We're going to do some mutual funds, uh, stock market investing. We have all the bylaws. We have everything legally incorporated. So if anybody's interested in that, I can say the information on that as well. <clears throat> um, let me see. He said that he could have made a killing grabbing athletes and rappers, but he saw it as a labor of love for the rank and foul black folks. Commendable. Uh, yeah, I mean, fuck the athletes and the rappers. I mean, not all of them, but you know what I mean? Like, we can't depend on them. You know, getting the athletes and rappers alone, we have, you know, billions of dollars that they can put together to, you know, re-transform to the black community, but we can't wait on them because uh, most of them are, you know, um, controlled by white folks, you know, uh, as many people, you know, don't want to believe most of their money is and most of their books and their accounting is done by white folks. So they're only limited to the, what they can actually do, regardless of what you see on Instagram or what you see on, you know, wherever you at. Um, but, you know, we can only depend on ourselves. I like to look at what Iowa Black is doing as far as investing. You can send it via email. I look at you. Yeah, okay. I'll, yeah, I'll send you the email. Uh, I can, you know, show you everything we're doing. Uh, we have another monthly meeting. Uh, this weekend, I don't think I'm going to be able to attend because I got too much going on. But um, yeah, I definitely say the information like I said, everything's legit, everything's incorporated. It's a, a limited partnership. Uh, we have all the bylaws. Our president, uh, Joe Wilson, he's heading everything. Uh, like I said, we're actually about to do a real estate deal, waiting for the next, uh, I think it's the next sheriff auction or whatever the case may be coming up. We're going to uh, buy some. We also look at the mutual funds. We're opening our brokerage account. So we got a lot of things going on. Uh, we have our accountant on board, uh, Anita T. Connor, the top CPA in Philadelphia. Got best of Philly multiple times. Uh, she's on board as our accountant. So everything is straight. All the books is straight. Um, so if anybody's interested in joining, like I said, you can, you know, I'll just send you the email, send you all the information. <clears throat> and it's almost nine o'clock, y'all. So I said I was only going to keep going like an hour. So thank y'all for all the questions uh, that you put in, uh, all the information that we shared. 
Um, again, you can always reach out to customer service at McCurry Financial Solutions.com, customer service at McCurry Financial Solutions.com. Um, we also will be having a webinar coming up next week. I'll send y'all the information on that shortly. I'm just preparing all the content and everything. Uh, it's going to be about making money online and how to start and grow an online business. Seven steps to starting and growing online business because we need to be uh, learning about the type of information. It's literally life changing information. Uh, good build today. Yeah, thank you, King. Definitely was a good build. Thank y'all for showing up. Like I said, I love having these conversations because, like I said in the beginning, uh, the very beginning when we first started, like a lot of us, uh, most of us were lied to when we grew up. <clears throat> we were mostly lied to when we grew up. And we weren't trained that, and we weren't told that there's actually a secret to be getting ahead financially. It's not about getting lucky. It's not about inheriting a lot of money. Of course, people inherit money. But I'm talking to the people who are self-made. Self-made millionaires, there's a secret. There's a formula. There's a science. There is, you know, there's, there's footprints on the steps that people have taken to become wealthy. But do you understand what that secret is? What the science is? How much are you reading? Like I said, I try to read a different book every week. I haven't been hitting my quota. It's been like once every two weeks. But still, I'm reading constantly. If you're not reading, you're stacking the cards up against yourself. Networking. Who do you hang around? Yeah, people that you grew up with. Yeah, that's cool. I got people that I grew up with that I love. But at the same time, we can't have the same conversations. If I'm trying to build a million dollar business and you talking about making $15 an hour, listen, I love you, but we don't see eye to eye. My vision is on a whole nother level. The conversations that I'm having will probably be overwhelming to you. So that means I need to get in the room with people, uh, you know, who are much uh, farther ahead than me. If I'm the smartest person in the room, listen, I'm in the wrong room. I'm in the wrong room. I love being in the room, but I don't know what the hell is going on. People talking about getting the one percent. People talking about you know eight figures. I'm like, I don't know what the hell y'all talking about, but I want to know. I don't like being in a room where I know most of the stuff, where I'm giving all the answers, I'm giving all the information. Those are the type of rooms I like to be in. That's just another secret to getting in financially. Another secret is what you do with your time. What you do with your time is very, very important. Like I said, I've studied, I've spoken to, I've met, I've built relationships with people who are highly successful. They don't play around when it comes to time. They don't play around when it comes to time, so I don't either. Someone, you know, wants to schedule time with me, yeah, that's cool, but it's going to cost you. Yes, it's going to cost you. Like I said, people that get ahead financially, they don't play around with their time. I'm not sitting watching Netflix for 12 hours. If I am, I'm not going to be complaining that I'm broke. How many of y'all know people saying, oh, I'm broke, but they're going out every weekend? Ain't nothing wrong with going out. I go out, but at the same time, <clears throat> I'm making sure I'm handling business first. That's why my book is called Take Care of Business First. You can go out, absolutely, but I'm going out after I spent 12 hours in the business. If I'm working from 8 a.m. until, you know, 5 to 5 p.m., all right, that's what? Nine hours? You know what I mean? All right, I might want to go and slide out and go get a drink. All right, I just have to put the time in. I'm not playing around when it comes to time. All right, all right, he says, I'm told that boxing is the sweet science. So, indeed, compound interest is the way, by way of investing, is the real sweet science. Yeah, compound interest, absolutely. Definitely compound interest. Compound interest is the eighth wonder in the world. What does that mean? That means that when you buy an investment, if you buy a mutual fund or whatever you want to buy, share of stock, that's great. People hit me up all the time saying, you know, I just bought a share of stock, I just bought a mutual fund for $3,000 or $1,000. Whatever the case may be, 500 index fund, that's great. But I'm like, make sure you are adding to it consistently because that will give you exponential growth. If you put $3,000 in a mutual fund, that's great. After some years, it's going to build. You're going to get interest. Definitely. That's great. But if you put 3000 in and if every month you put 100 or 200 or 
just like what y'all pay in car notes and fucking cable packages and whatever the case may be, put that same money into your mutual fund account where you just spent three thousand dollars and put that one, two, three hundred dollars in a month, you will see how that will grow exponentially. I watch Arrow and Jim Mathis, but they're on DVR. I'm either reading or listening to heavy hitters talking about building wealth. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's a science to it. Um, make sure you are around people who want to level up. Uh, make sure you're around people who want to, you know, uh, do better, want to make money, want to build wealth, because the conversations will be different. Um, so that's it for today, y'all. Again, if y'all have any other questions, you can uh, send an email to customer service at <clears throat> McCrayFinancialSolutions.com. That's customer service at McCrayFinancialSolutions.com. You can also call us on the business line, 844-562-2346. That's 844-562-2346. So keep your eyes on your email inbox because we're doing a, 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 a free training next week on online sales and marketing, how to start and grow an online business. Um, I'll be having that out shortly <clears throat> in the link where you can register and stuff like that. Um, and anything else that you want me to cover, you want me to talk about, you want me to speak on, listen, I'm open. Like I said, send the emails to the customer service or you can call uh, 844-562-2346, 844-562-2346. Y'all have a great night.